And we're live and back again, as the none of the uh, the fates predicted that this would continue. But yet it has, one way or the other. Welcome again to Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D and D fifth ed campaign. Although I, 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 you know, I introduced it that way, and that's what we played for the last three, four, a number of years. Twenty sixteen, I think. <laughs> number of years, um, but uh, you know, I don't want to necessarily limit it. I kind of thought of the idea we might do a one shot here and there of different systems and different things. But for now, this is our alt campaign. Our main campaign is suspended for the summer. Uh, for numerous reasons, not least of which they were all kind of broadcasting from home and one of our players couldn't do that. So we thought, well, we still want to play. So we've invented a whole new crew of characters and we're now running them through their adventures uh, in the portside village, portside village, portside town, portside area of Ilthwater off the west coast of Eskus. Uh, I am Mark the Encaffeinated One. I'm the host and GM. Along with me, I have a group of players. Players, introduce yourselves. From which side would you like us to start? Let's go left to right. Uh, I'm, Pat. <laughs> uh, I'm Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, uh, human illusionist. Uh, I'm Marie. I am playing Annie, who is a rogue and also human. Hi, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medrek, half orc cleric. <laughs> yeah, an icon. All the all the what humans are? Are, are are like, and I am also human. Um, I am not a robot. Yes, and uh, something you might notice as a change, uh, we have been uh, engaging with an artist uh, who is quite phenomenal, and uh, we've 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 paid for a few portraits to be made. We've now added Medrek's portrait onto. The list of them. These are just the icon versions. We have full body portraits, actually, of all of these characters. Uh, and uh, that is George84. Contact information will be in the show notes under the uh, YouTube uh, video. Uh, I will try to remember to add them to the Twitch description, uh, and you'll also see them hopefully in the end credits if I remember to put the end credits in. And we have put them uh, up on Facebook as well. Definitely yes. go check them out. It's yep. really good. Yep, and uh, deserves as much as you can send their way because, uh, frankly, uh, I'm, I'm still kind of caught because I would love to spend hundreds of dollars to get all of the characters that I conceive of illustrated. Uh, as a GM, uh, you don't have a singular character to illustrate and you start to think about all of the, the NPCs and villains and good guys and then you start to go, wait, that, I want all of them. Um, maybe if there's... Uh, yeah, if there's a character from the other campaign, and actually uh, maybe we'll start thinking about getting the other characters uh, illustrated from that campaign, but if there's an NPC that you guys would like to see illustrated, I'd love to hear that. I'd love to figure that Vrenwick. out. Vrenwick. Vrenwick would be very <laughs> challenging, but I think, yeah, it's a really interesting character too. So, God, how would I describe him in a paragraph? We'll see. In, I mean, I gave him an entire, like, two-page Google Docs to, like... <laughs> Oh man, to try to yeah. Okay, well, well there's a. I'll I'll make a note of Rinwick being one of the first um, illustrations from the other one. All right. Uh, it is uh, somewhat of a muggy summer here right now. It's one of the reasons we had changed the time. Uh, apologies to those of you who might be trying to catch this live as we are shifting slightly. Uh, on a week by week basis, we're hoping to find a consistent spot. But uh, the heat and humidity is quite uh, quite tough here. We don't have a, an expensive studio or proper air conditioning, so um, we're going to perhaps run a little bit shorter today. It depends on how much I find myself sticking to my desk. <laughs> but let us uh, revisit what happened in the previous week. After the surreal meeting with the Gynus Sphinx, Catheron, the group found itself with life returning to a little bit of normal. The steady daily routines of the town settled in around them. Ships full of cargo arriving at high tide, fishers bringing barrels full of their daily catch to the port, caravans full of goods coming in from Pitajun. 
fog tends to obscure the ever present promontory above the town, where the tower of towers of the Baron and Baroness Harquin are shadows against the clouds. Kamar Medric visited the solitary temple of Ignis to speak with the flamekeeper and further his education in the ways of Ignis, the god of sun and fire. She expressed concern over the lack of new church disciples and charged him with recruiting more people. She also shared her feelings about the great confusion, but doesn't have enough for her theory just yet to share. Annie relaxed at the Three Bells pub and received a letter attached to the leg of a bird. After reading it, she wrote her own letter and sent it back. And Silas met up with his friends and brought along someone else to introduce them to, his young son, Nicky. He explained that he needed their help to support him as he goes to talk to his father-in-law, also the town's prominent blacksmith, Wish. They go with him and witness a very tense conversation between them. Wish clearly does not like Silas, but he's glad to see the child. He asks that Nicky be brought to him and his wife to live, which Silas says he will consider. To the request that Wish made uh, make him some armor, Wish agrees, but the price will include the delivery of a metal cage to the cold pack lighthouse in the south in a few days. That night, as they slept, they began a dream, but this one was created by Cathron. They arrived together, finding themselves on the beach near Aelthvar, but each of them appeared a little bit different in the dream world. Silas's skin took on a mottled green hue. Medric glows a deep, rich orange and yellow, and Addy had a golden tinge to her hair and skin. A dark shadow loomed over the town, indistinct and roiling. Catheron explained that they were all in a dream, but one which will feel real for them. She needed to unlock some elements of prophecy to discern the truth, but they were guarded. She told them that she would distract the great power of the darkness in order for the rest of them to proceed through a labyrinth and activate nodes of light. In the next instant, the group found themselves on a floating rock, surrounded in a sea of what appeared to be glistening crystalline water. They proceeded with caution, discovering large clusters of crystals in each chamber that were protected by a large, semi-solid spider-like creature, or more of them, which breathed fire and lightning. Already, they have cleared three rooms when... Overhead. Overhead, the sky is indistinct. Small points that could be stars seem to move independently of where they normally would sit. Some are obscured, and the moons themselves seem to be far and distant, almost as though they are further away. And yet, they seem more, more nimbus than usual, with a glowing cloud around them, swirling, energetic. And through all of this, seen only because they block the sun, the moons and stars, are a great shadowy beast, difficult to make out for detail, but it seems to be long and has limbs that stretch for miles, shadowy curved limbs that seem to straddle everything. In and amongst it, almost invisible, is the tiny little figure of Catherine, who to you up close would appear to be as a, a body of a large lion with a woman's torso on top distinct only because it too seems to take on a slight glow as you see it appear and disappear and appear in other places at one point however right now it appears as though the darkness engulfs Catherine, and you hear the faint distant scream not of panic but of frustration and anger she's still fighting but she can't help you right now we return to the ground where you have just defeated a couple of really big spiders. <laughs> and in fact, one had just crept into the room when you were successful in reigniting this crystal. And as it reignited, not only did it refresh each of you, restoring in mechanical terms your hit points, but also you found that that creature was destroyed. So now you have some strategy as to what you might approach next. We'll continue in uh, in order of initiative unless you guys decide to pause here for any significant period of time. That is up to you guys. 
I mean, I see no point in waiting here. If there's more to be done, we should get this done quickly. Yeah, before any more spiders show up. Okay. Uh, you're still muted, Silas, so I don't know if I... <laughs> yeah, might as well go. Okay. We'll continue in, 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 uh, in round order and uh, tracking things. Uh, a couple of notes for you, uh, Medric. It's, I'll just move it mm -hmm. into the more visible area. That is your token for your spiritual weapon. Awesome. What you will notice is there is a counter at the top, mm -hmm. which is 10 rounds, which is how long it lasts. So each okay. round, just tick that down. You won't have to keep track of the number anymore. Gotcha. Uh, I usually yeah. just tick it down on a piece of paper. But... Yep. It, but I'll the thing do is, my best to remember. The nice thing about having it right in the screen is we all can see it. Uh, and also, um, when we if we end this session, you still have your spiritual weapon up. You'll know at the beginning of the next session without having to find that note. Okay. So I figured I'm, I, um, uh, we can, we can't it. actually see the number. Can you not see the we number? We can see the token. Okay, just a second. I will edit that. We, we can we can see the bar, but we can't see the number. Obviously. Yeah, I yeah. I don't think we can see the number unless you give us control over the I think icon. That, well, Medric can see the number. You should be able to see the yeah. space. No, I don't have control of the weapon. <laughs> um, oh, it changed it. You did have control of the weapon. Let me just make sure that's there you go. You should have control of it now. Awesome. Okay, now I see the number. And you, yeah, you at least you should see the number and I see the number. So and, and we can see generally where it's at. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You should still see the progress bar, essentially. Um, so you'll be able to at least judge if it's going away right away or not. Uh, I am going to move it off the main page, though, because you don't have it for the moment. Okay. Uh, and I have updated your icon there as well. Awesome. So we will start with Silas moving along. Okay. Uh... One, two, three, four, five, six. Sure. No creep out here, and I don't think you can see those. So. Uh, you can. You see the uh, brief glow from inside, which would be from there. Yeah. And you can just make out the edge of one of the large spiders as it is picking away at the uh, crystal that's there. Uh, the crystal. Uh, as you watch it, grows dimmer. No. Uh, that uh, is your move. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I am going to use Cold Snap on it. Okay. This may be a bad idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, it has to make a constitution save. One moment. I realized I didn't actually list up my character or my uh, NPCs. Too many things to treat track of. All right. So, let us see. That is a constitution save? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's an okay. No effects. Uh, Silas uh, puts a hand hand forward and snaps his fingers but the uh, the ice glances off it so it doesn't take any damage or any effect okay but it is aware that you are there now mm-hmm all right there, i think i have all of my things up now uh let us see here if we go through uh i will need to add that to the initiative and he will mention there's a spider thing ahead. It's eating the crystal. That's not good. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Getting used to the the buttons. All right. OK. 
Okay. Uh, however, Annie, it is your turn to come up as you hear this this declaration. It does get fairly narrow where Silas happens to be standing. It also gets a lot more erratic. Cool. Um, I will um, use my bonus action to dash. Skip over the large body of the semi-translucent creature that was there. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to go here, and I am going to try to do a stab. Oh, that's definitely a hit. Do the stab. Cool. Succeed at the stab. Nice. Yeah. Uh, as you uh, stab into it, first of all, again, the semi, semi-solid semi form of the, the creature, uh, it, it is as though you're swirling fire and mist. But it does seem to find and collect with something, uh, cutting strands of being. This close, you can also notice that it has been siphoning from the crystal. At least that's the only way you can describe it, as limbs seem to be connected to it and uh, drawing life out of the crystal itself. The crystal itself seems to be cracking and dimming. I believe that is my turn. All right. Medric. Just getting stuff organized in this room. Okay. I'll move to see what the commotion is about. Two, three, four, six... That's as far as I can go. And spiritual weapon. That's going to be cast right here. Okay. It Do I take it down right away or no? Uh, no. Okay. Basically at the and start of each, uh, or at the end of the next turn. Okay. So that will attack. This plus my uh, proficiency, yes, sir. Ooh, yeah, that's definitely a hit. And damage, is, it, is that like plus my wisdom modifier? I forget. Uh, yes, D8 plus. Bah. Alright. Oh, actually. Oh, no, okay, that's right. Uh, as and Madrick, Madrick just has like a shield up. Okay. As the spirit like, comes mm-hmm. again into existence, starts swirling its flaming uh, hammer and like burning away spider webs. It seems to be dissolving. Not quite dissolved yet, however. Uh, it's turn. Uh, let's see. What is it going to do? It is going to continue to siphon. Advantage. Woof. Apparently, it is too distracted by partially being poked and burned to do much of anything. Uh, in that case, let's use one of those. Uh, it will try to engulf Annie. Uh, it's, yeah, I think so. So as you recall, these ones would send out tendrils of arm or tendrils of shadow and engulf and hold people firm. Uh, where is this? Yup, been here. Well, there's only a 12, however, which I don't think is enough. Uh, 15. 15, no. This time, wary of it, you know to watch for that little twitch as the, as the limb kind of turns from being a multi-segmented... A uh, curved limb into something that feels almost uh, boneless and without form, and it snatches out at you, but you definitely dodge out of the way. That's its turn. Silas, it's a bit crowded in there now. That's fine. I don't intend on getting anywhere near it. Uh, although. Really, gonna got to get that charged up. Um, or would put me there. 
six wouldn't get me in though so let's go to five uh oh oh now the dynamic lighting is back on and i can't see much <laughs> um okay i'll try uh uh cold snap again okay And again, that was uh, con. Yep. <clears throat> wow. Okay. It got lucky again. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Okay. Annie, as you're there, you can see the the uh, pulsating crystal kind of. Almost as though it is breathing its last. It's like it's bleeding out with the light energy sort of flickering inside of it. And yes, the place does get darker uh, as everything feels like uh, at this moment the shadow is about to over overwhelm and claim this crystal. And he is muted. I'm going to try to hit it again and probably miss with an eight. Unfortunately, yes, a miss. An eight does miss as its form seems to be dissolving into a cloud. But it's Perfect. Uh, with my bonus action, I will give Medric the health action and uh, for attacking this dude. Okay. What's, what do you say? What's your shout this time? Uh, I tell him what's going on in the room. Okay. No, so that can't. There, so. little little extra motivation from the desperation. She's 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 seeing this thing go out. Not really sure what will happen if it does. That is your bo your bonus and your action. You still have a move technically. I'll stay there. Okay. Medric. Right. Spiritual eleven. That is a miss as a spiritual you have on this attack. That is worse. That is still a miss. Unfortunately, as its shadowy cloud-like form seems to uh, easily evade the flames this time. Almost like it's learning. So I will move and hit it with a hammer instead. All right. It's one-handed. Oh, that's a hit. That's better. <laughs> it's almost max damage. Oh, that's the damage. Jeez, it's only my, it's, uh, my strength it. modifier gets applied to that, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, Smack. as you come crashing down upon it, uh, and your hammer has a slight trail of, of flame. It, it's mostly spiritual it's not an actual flame at this particular point but you can feel within the growth of your inner flame something they've talked about when you're studying in the early stages to become a kmar the idea that um when the time came you would erupt in flame and it feels in a moment like that that is happening and certainly as you collide with this shadow it feels formless and without uh connection but uh it, it nonetheless burns away this creature as it is now deceased. The crystal does not uh, does not seem to stop diminishing. And in fact goes out. Oh man. The room is plunged into darkness. Shit. What was wrong with that one? Uh, and you feel a sense of chill enter the area. All of you make a constitution saving throw. Okay. 19 is a save. 4 or 5 is not a save, unfortunately. And a six is not a save. So, 
Those of you who, sa who did not save take eight points of damage. The other two take four. This is cold damage. Uh, as a, a the entire space feels like it diminishes, not from uh, uh, not from sort of physical cold, almost a spiritual cold. It feels as though something has been lost in the world, uh, as as though a void is opened up and taken something out of existence entirely. Well. Uh, so did we fail, guys? I don't know, but there seems to still be more. Can you, like, maybe restore some light into the crystal? I don't know. I don't Can know. I... I'll look at the crystal. It seems gray and lifeless. And as you move I'm closer, okay. small little spider cracks seem to appear in the surface of it. Well, we should probably get to the next ones before the spiders do. Yep. So if the crystal's cracked, can we, like, can I, like, chip off a piece of it and, like, just bring it with me? Or... Um, you can certainly try. Let me see. Is it going to take a lot of time? Make a sleight of hand roll. Oh, boy. Or just whack it with your hammer. It's not physical. All oh, right. Crap. Yeah, I'll just not do that then. Okay. As you reach towards it, and Annie says, it's not physical, you know. Medrick kind of backs off the hand a little bit. Yeah. We got better prior like greater priorities right now, I guess. <laughs> Yo. Let's keep going. Okay. Okay. Um, now, as you step to the threshold... You see, once again, the path ahead. Uh, and once again, it kind of grows and shimmers in, in size and in shape and seems to be twisting somewhat. Uh, as you move, this is either going to be difficult terrain or you can make an acrobatics check. There we go. I have a useful action. Uh, yeah, I'll recharge the staff. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Then I am going to use my bonus action to dash, so I'll just use my regular amount of movement. Okay. So you're you're picking your way, but very carefully. It's this weird sort of uh, uh, kind of almost uh, uh, you know tap dancing that you end up having to do to kind of move quickly at the at the same time uh, move carefully. So where are you moving to? Uh, to there. Okay. As you round that corner, you do see something come into view. Uh, one of the large... Oh, is it actually there? I forgot um, to remember how to do that. There we go. Yeah. One of the large, uh, strange-shaped creatures, the one that you remember uh, breathing fire. Or not really okay. breathing fire so much as emitting fire, turning itself into fire briefly. Am I supposed to be able to see that? Because I don't. Uh, all I see is like cracks of light, like up. <laughs> yeah, it's because the. I'll have to the, turn the uh, light off again. I was hoping that was going to work, but. Uh, let's see here. There we go. You should see it now. Basically, crouching up along the bend up ahead. Cool. Um, I will grab a dart from my bag. Okay. And throw it. 
probably miss with a seven. Unfortunately, the dart goes flying off into the uh, the blue miasma below you and vanishes. And that is the best that I can do. Okay. Uh, now it is. Uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna add turn order. One moment, please. Actually, ends up going right after what Annie does. I think it's just going to dash or move forward. You notice that as it moves forward, it is moving sure-footedly. It does not seem to be bothered by the roiling turmoil of ground underneath you. Uh, and it will attempt to lash out in what appears to be a bite. But misses, unfortunately. Uh, then it will actually move back. You will have an attack of opportunity. Oh yeah, that connects. Smack. As, yeah, you, you effectively kind of whip out with the, the rapier at the last minute, uh, catching some of its its uh, ghostly fang in your uh, with the tip of the rapier, kind of tearing a long tear, and it lets out a, a strange hollow howl. I think I'm getting echo from the other room. I gotta be I gotta be more whispery. All right, uh, that was that things move Medric. All right. I, I, I was like, guys, there's another one. Okay. I can't get to it. So I'll just use half my movement and walk around cautiously. Okay. It feels almost as though the ground itself is dissolving. And as you've picked up your foot a couple of times, you've noticed that less and less of it remains behind. Um, as the two of you have moved through... Uh, it has actually gotten more difficult. Um, and you can see that the path behind you is starting to disintegrate. Silas, you can see that ahead of you where they've stepped, uh, it is getting to be more and more dangerous. It's not, it is difficult terrain, and you will need an acrobatic roll to follow them uh, in this current state. Or take a second, or actually, you already be taking a second action for, for difficult terrain. Or slower. Yeah. Uh, that is your movement, and you brought up your weapon. Yeah, I so... moved. To... Do I get to attack at all, or I moved a spiritual weapon too? Yep, the yep. spiritual weapon can't reach you from here. If you have a ranged attack, you yep. can certainly try. Sacred flame. It has to roll uh, dexterity saving throw, and the DC is only twelve. So hopefully, it rolls badly. Okay. No, that is not badly. <laughs> not badly. As it seems to dance and spin uh, around the the rocks, almost able to to kind of step off of them and still maintain connection and move. It's almost as though it's not actually physically there. As long as it maintains a connection, it can move. That is Medric's turn. Silas, you see the ground starting to disintegrate more and more in front of you. Uh, let's see, where she go? Ah, unfortunately, you find your, your footing kind of slipping, and you now find yourself sliding off the side of this. You grip onto it and manage to hold yourself, but you are now essentially just hanging off the edge. Okay. Both of you see Silas start to slip and fall. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's not good. Eleven probably doesn't get me back up there. Unfortunately, no. <coughs> the more and more you grip at the stone, the more and more it seems to just fall away. Leaving nothing more than now uh, but a foot and a half wide uh, pathway that illogically is still floating in mid in mid space. The other strange thing is no matter that part of you is hanging off the side, you don't seem to be touching the miasma. It seems to be farther below you, but impossible to judge distance. Just because of the optical and mental illusions. 
Keep going. This is all just a dream. <coughs> well, that's what Silas suggests, Annie. Mm-hmm. You see your friend nearly falling off the side. The one thing well, that runs through your mind is he says it's all just a dream, but you have definitely felt here in physical form. Yo. Yeah. Um. Well, I'm going to move forward. Okay. Uh, for up here, do I still need to do an acrobatics check? You do. It is all considered to be that rough terrain. Or you can take the double, the bonus and or an action to take double movement. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to start off by doing two, and let's see where that takes me. Okay. Because I can do three without using an action. Um, and I'm going to try to attack him. Oh, yeah. Nasty hit. Ha <laughs> uh, As once again, you kind of end up swirling the blade a little bit, almost like you're stirring up smoke. And now its form seems to be getting less and less distinct. Okay. And uh, as my bonus action, I will give Medric advantage on an attack on that dude. All right. It's attack now. Let's see. I have to do a little bit of measuring. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the creature sidles up closer to you. Hmm. Actually, can it really do that? Always fun. Yeah. <laughs> trying to think of the mechanics of this. Uh, nope, it's desperate enough. Um, it starts to dissolve in place. Little small particles of gray flake off of it and then sort of blow outward uh, towards you. Actually covers a wide area, but the only thing caught in it is Annie. I need a constitution saving throw. Hey, yo. Well, well enough. Despite the... The choking nature of this this almost ash-like flakes that flow into you, uh, you manage to quickly uh, cover over your nose and kind of hold your breath just long enough. Uh, you can feel it kind of swirling and whirling around your your uh, your uh, ears and kind of in your ear canals and kind of have to shake your head to get this dust out. Um, a small amount kind of kind of catches in one eye and the eye tears up for a moment, and that you have to kind of blink it a little bit. It's almost like you're trying not to yawn in this space. <laughs> but the effect passes over you with no other effect. At this point, it will try to get the hell out of there. Uh, so it will try to move away, which is prompting an, an attack of opportunity. That is a hit. <laughs> and as it tries to scurry away, you catch it now uh, kind of out of the corner of the eye, which is not uh, tearing up, and uh, tear it to shreds as it tries to move away. And I cannot mark it as... Okay. Da -da -da. Stupid windows don't overlap. There we go. Uh, as the creature uh, is dispatched. Ken, while I'm removing my rapier, can I try to like push him off? The edge here is fairly... It is quite narrow yeah. right there. Um, unfortunately, have you ever tried to scoop water with a stick? Fair enough. <laughs> it's, you kind of sweep through it, and it just sort of swirls around the rapier as you move your as you move through it. Um, that is its turn. Medric, you see it dissipate, but there's still this sort of form right there. Yeah, I'll move this provisional weapon up north just in case something else shows up okay so that's like the bonus action and i will go grab a hold of silas and try to pull him back up 
Okay. Um, it's easy enough. Uh, what's your strength? I think your strength is. I am tiny. Uh, 16, I believe. So yeah. Plus yeah. Two so with yeah, with lift 240 pounds. With uh, <laughs> his help, it's fairly easy to to pull a Silas back up onto the ground. Um, you can see though, there's very little space for actual um, uh, to actually place your feet, um, and you're kind of having to balance a little bit. And Medrick, you're going to have to hold onto him for the moment because he can't really find purchase all that well. Yeah, that works. All right. Thanks, Medrick. No problem. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and Silas. Having found some footing, you're at least able to step here, but uh, the ground uh, already tread on by both Medric and Annie is somewhat treacherous. Mm hmm. Before this collapses. Well. Do we still have movement left? <laughs> well, I have to make an, uh, an acrobatics right. check. You're able to maintain yourself up right now. Medric's okay. still kind of holding on to you anyway. Uh, might, as well, might as well use my actual movement to catch up. So I'm done. Okay. Um. Distracted. Annie, Silas has been moving very carefully after falling off the side at one point, but has caught up to you. You can see now the ground between Silas and Medric is mostly gone. There's massive holes now where the rocks have started to fall away. You're also muted. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to brain two seconds. Can I? One, two, three, four. As you try to move by that large spider remains, you will have to make an acrobatics check or take even more additional movement. Okay, then I'll just do the acrobatics check. No problem. You, dot, you dance over it as if it's not even there. Perfect. So uh, Silas, you see Annie field. move with, with incredible grace, and you actually think that may have actually been a dance move. Some sort of strange pirouette. Probably. Uh, uh, okay. As you get to there, one thing you notice right away is the dimness of the crystal in this room already is starting to sparkle and to twitch. In the midst of the room as well, you see a new creature, something larger than what you've seen before. Uh, strangely... Um, Strangely kind of like uh, a large egg sac, but the egg sac itself is sort of emitting limbs, some of which are going all the way back to the crystal itself, and they kind of pulse with a little bit of, of energy that is being drawn out of the crystal. Uh, the creature uh, in your mind addresses you. You do not deserve to know. That is which for the shadow alone. Make a uh, wisdom saving throw. Ooh, good on the saving throw. That's awesome. Saving throw? Saving throws. There we go. Uh, as you feel the voice kind of reverberate through your mind, um, you instinctually kind of are drawn into a moment. Um, also, I don't think they can contact me through my mind. Oh, did you put the ring on? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then it, it feels like a distant echo. Uh, but the distant echo still uh, still affects you because it's not just a mental effect. Um, but you, you're kind of drawn in your memory to a moment where you found yourself lost, but you kind of shove away that memory as if you uh, kind of find it irrelevant in the moment. Yo. Um... And I would like to try to throw a dart at this thing. Okay. Was a 20 hit? 20 does, uh, well, actually, double check something here real quick. Okay. 
believe that does hit though. Oh, stop pressing buttons. Uh, okay. So the 20 uh, uh, barely scratches the surface, but does hit. Cool. Max damage, I think. No. Yeah. Almost. Six. Right. Uh, I don't have that set up. Oops. And actually seeing that huge thing, I would have gone this way instead of forward. Because I would have seen it when I got there, right? Uh, yeah, you would have seen it as soon as you got to the door's <laughs> edge, even though the light is so, dim in here. Yeah, so I would have gone a bit further from the creature than towards it, and I'll yell, there's something bigger in here! Oh, actually, no, for this roll, I'll just let it stand, because that was a good roll anyway. But, uh, uh, no, actually, it didn't activate that. You're fine. I don't remember. Don't have the 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 um, the uh, uh, bad guys in character sheets. So I'm having to kind of on the fly remember how to combine the things that I'm combining. Um, and why have I forgotten the name of the thing? <laughs> it is nameless. There you go. Fine. It's nameless. Uh, as we continue. Uh, I forgot see. to roll for like damage when I cast virtual weapon. <laughs> of course, like when it's like damage to myself, I always roll for max for max damage. <laughs> oh right, right, your own damage. All right, I need to. Uh, it, 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 and it needs to roll. fits anyway. All right. Uh, Medric, you're up. The All ground right. in front of you does seem very, very dangerous, though, now that two people have trod over it. If I take, like, half movement, do I still have to make an acrobatics check? Yes. So it's an acrobatics check no matter what, right? Yep. 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 Okay, so I might as well just use my full movement. Well, no, you can't. Uh, he's a, at this point. It's an acrobatics check, and you have to take half movement. That's right. Although okay. you could use your action to get the other half of your movement. And he has the one advantage that you can take a bonus action to also move, which means you could overcome that. But All you right. made an well, acrobatics check. Acrobatics check. Oh, okay. that's good. Yep, yeah, you find the larger so bits I will and use, pieces uh, double to, my to movement. Step. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six. And for bonus action, I'll move the spiritual weapon in whichever direction Annie went. Okay, probably down the, the or continuing along the pathway. You can't really see inside that room just yet, although she, you've heard the sort of hollow echo of... Uh, of there's a uh, thing! There's a thing. Yeah, that's, that's basically the hollow echo. All right. Silas. Uh... So at this, uh, okay, for this section, is it still double movement and an acrobatic save? Uh, it or is check? because two people have passed until you pass beyond where Medric is right now, and it's going to be difficult because it's a narrow space where uh, mm -hmm. a corpse is. Um... Okay. Yep. So 13. You're able to keep upright. Okay. One, two. But if you intend to move beyond this creature, though, you will need another acrobatics check because where it mm -hmm. is is filling up most of the space. Uh, one, two, three could be there. Unfortunately, you find yourself slipping, trying to step on what looked like mm -hmm. a solid stone a moment ago, and now sliding again off to the side, hanging no. on for dear life. Right in front of Medric, which is fortunate. Yeah. However. So if he's next to me and he starts slipping, does that count as an attack of opportunity? And by attack, I mean, like, reach out? It's a reaction. If he's, if he's sliding off, he's... he's 
Uh, well, actually, I'll let you make a, a an acrobatics check to kind of catch him before he falls off. Otherwise, he's oh, down right. on the ground. Acrobatics or athletics? Um, acrobatics, because it's more of a balance thing than it is a force thing. Unfortunately, he slips down. He is still holding on to the, mm -hmm. the, tra the trail, however. I'm going to try to climb back up. Okay. Okay. Nah, unfortunately, nope. I'm not able to get any more purchase. It's it's kind of like grabbing onto loose uh, loose pebbles. The more you grab a handful, it just moves out from underneath you. So you're kind of just holding on to the firm grips you've got. Um, yep, that's it for me. Okay. Annie, two things happen. From beside you, if I get the buttons right, appears a familiar creature. This is fine. Manifesting into this space, almost as though it had been lurching and, and uh, leaning, just waiting for something to enter. Which one those are? Um, being next to you, yeah, it will attempt to grapple you. As it is one of the forms which has these strangely uh, transformative limbs. Uh, let's see. Does a 16 hit? Yes. All right. Uh, no, not a d20 damage. What am I doing here? Uh, Ooh. You take 10 points of damage as it wraps its its uh, tentacles around you, gripping and holding you tight. Uh, you are grappled and restrained at the moment. It wasn't a critical hit, so that didn't apply. Uh, that's its turn. The other oh, thing... No. The other thing doesn't need to do that anymore. Um, the other thing will attempt. Oh, sorry, they're gonna work all that well. Um, a, no, it doesn't need a siphon. It's fine. Um, hmm, what is it going to do? The other one will hold an action. How about that, Annie? You're up. You're currently being held by this thing. You can feel its uh, its tendrils kind of wrapping itself around you, trying to kind of almost turn into uh, the same ashen smoke as the other one, and you kind of have to kind of keep twitching your nose and your mouth to not allow yourself to breathe it in. You can attempt to break free from it, or if you have something else you'd like to try, you're certainly welcome to. Uh, acrobatics to, squ to squiggle free. Unfortunately, you find that each time you get one part of you free, another part is wrapped tighter. Uh, I'm going to yell, fuck that hurt, guys. There's more spiders here, too. Hurry up. <laughs> okay. We're on our way. Uh, I used my potion of healing last time. Yes, okay. Uh, and that's what I can do. Um... If someone does try to hit this spider, they have advantage. So you're, how does that work? Uh, so I made a mistake last time when I was using my ability. It's when you use a help action to aid an ally in attacking a creature, the target of the attack has to be within 30 feet of you. So it's only attacks and it's for the target. Oh, okay. All right. So basically you're trying to wriggle to get it into a vulnerable position. Yep. Cool. Using uh, me trying to get out as a, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird kind of trying to find purchase and, you know, put a foot in the in, in some place to find a step hold when it doesn't really go all over. It doesn't really feel substantial. It's both force and not matter. Medric, though, you do hear the somewhat muffled cries of anger and frustration coming from Annie up and around. You can't see her from where you are. Um, there is still a barrier that exists here, uh, but you do see a slightly dim opening right there where the trail seems to end. Yeah, Silas However, will say, go help her. She needs help more than I do. I can pull myself up. Are you sure? 
She's in danger more than I am. All right. Well, I will make that acrobatics roll and trust in Silas that he knows what he's doing. I, uh, only one person has walked. I don't think you need an. Well, there's still the spider to get by. Oh, yeah. that I suppose. Yep. Yeah. Well, I guess oh. I face plant. So, oh. on the mm -hmm. opposite side from uh, from uh, uh, Silas, uh, Medric, you're like, all right, fine, I'm going to do this. One step, whoop, yeah, ah, uh, and you come colliding down onto the surface, facing uh, Silas on the other side, holding on. Um, you can try to use your action to get back up, however. Oh, yeah. Is that athletics, like doing a pull-up? Uh, athletics or acrobatics would work in this case. Yeah, it's going to be athletics. Yeah, I think Son of that a makes more sense. Unfortunately, oh, I'm not going to use that natural that's one. That's a natural you, one. That's, that's, too, that's too mean at this point. Uh, actually, I will say you lose a bit of ground. You're now hanging on by one arm uh, as you basically try to muscle your way out of this and then realize that you've just created a huge gouge in the ground that's there. Uh, fortunately, fortunately, the spider body falls off the edge and kind of goes plummeting into the miasma below. You kind of watch it uh, go, and as it hits the miasma, it seems to electrify and then turn to ash and then float away along the edges of it. Okay, so now we know what that does. Um, and for my bonus action, I vaguely saw the direction in which Annie went. Mm -hmm. One, two. So I'll move that as far as I can. And can I actually to make an attack here at no. disadvantage? No, it's directed under your uh, your sight, so you can't hit things that are... Actually, I don't think you can move it out of your sight. So uh, Let me just double check on that. Uh, it doesn't say anything about that, but yeah, you probably couldn't hit with it. Okay, I'll just move it as far as I can. Because it, it's not an intelligent creature. It's just a... Um... Yeah. Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted. I just want to try to look that up so I reference it myself. But uh, for now, I'm going to rule that you can't really move it out of your sight. Uh, and you can't attack anything if you can't see um, where it is. Which means you could move exactly. and not see it, but you couldn't actually uh, uh, do anything with it. Uh. Yeah, that's my turn. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, this is not the greatest rescue. Silas, you're facing against Medric, who now seems to be even worse situation than you are. Well, I will, uh, try pulling myself up. Nope. Whatever you do, just don't step on my fingers. Um, no, that's it. You can still use your action. That would be effectively your move. Okay. There you go. Scrabbling for purchase. The few rocks that Medric hasn't already knocked out of the way give you kind of connection. In fact, you, you kind of reach over to the, the one big rock that Medric seems to have hold, held onto his one hand and kind of grab that from the other side. Miraculously, it still stays purchased and you find yourself standing a little uneasily, but you are there. Uh, Medric is not looking great. Okay. That's it. So. Okay. Um, let's see. What is it going to do? It can't do that. Uh, it's already got you. So the spider begins to move over towards the one that's holding uh, uh, Annie begins to move over towards the larger creature and dragging Annie with it. As you move closer, um, the, the spider legs coming out of this particular egg, large egg sac, the egg sac itself sitting about three and a half feet tall uh, and these large spider-like limbs kind of flowing outward from it uh, not entirely like vines in some way. Um, one of them reaches out towards Annie uh, and will start to kind of move around you uh, and it sort of starts touching. Let's see if it can do that. Let's see what it will roll. Uh, hmm. Wow. Um, it seems to be kind of 
probing you in different places. Like it's 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 looking in kind of where your hair is. It kind of musses through your hair. You feel this weird, creepy sensation of of again like ashen wind kind of ruffling through your hair. Uh, and it seems to be looking and seeing if you have pockets and seeing if you have anything on you. Um, it it touches the rapier and kind of re- recoils a bit from the rapier. That is its turn. Uh, Annie, you're up. Actually, Hello, I will there. try once more. Uh, your your to... rescue doesn't seem to be forth- forthcoming, let's put it that way. <laughs> no. Um... I will try once more to get out of this. Yeah, unfortunately, it is between the two of them. Um, there's a sort of sense of I can twist this way, but then the other thing starts to poke at you, <laughs> and you kind of instinctively pull back, almost as little, little like it's uh, an unfortunate tickle, just the way that it happens to catch you in the side, and you kind of twitch, and unfortunately get get held in tight. Okay. Um... I don't really have anything I can do as a bonus action. So I'll, again, advantage on this guy. Okay. Medric. And yeah. Once again, right, the shouts of Annie another, the another rock that seems stable, like farther away, preferably on the side I want to go on. And <laughs> I will yeah, pull to pull myself up. Okay. Finally finding some some purchase. Uh, Silas is standing right there and kind of just sort of standing over you. But uh, you kind of grapple onto one of his legs, which almost sends him tumbling. But then you find another rock just behind, just w- underneath where he's, uh, where he's standing. You kind of wrap your hands around the stone where his other foot is and pull yourself up to a standing position. Both of you right. now can see that the ground that you're on is nearly destroyed from the kerfuffle. And as you look backward and kind of glance to where you've, you've been, you actually notice that the path has dissolved over there entirely, as though oh, the entire space is starting to come apart. So I will uh, move towards the direction where Annie went. Is that okay. an athletics check or uh, acrobatic? Or? Uh, it is uh, only one person has gone, so it's just difficult train. Okay. So I will sprint as far as I can. <laughs> yeah. So six squares. Uh, three. Six. He used his action to get up. Oh, I could say, yeah, it'd be three squares. You can't sprint. Yeah, you've already, you had to use an action to step up, basically, to grab, to scrabble back onto the, the pathway. Okay. Uh, if I go, like, on the corner here, I'm still on the path, right? Uh, you're on a precarious part of the path, but yes. But, and I can see any from here, and the spiders? Uh, let's see what the line looks like. I don't like. think so. Uh, I think that you're going to run right into this wall right here. All right, I'll stay here then. But you can see there's an opening right there. Right there. There's an opening. Okay. Am I allowed moving the weapon, like, just in a straight line inside, not seeing what's in there? Uh, yeah, I could say you could kind of make an impulse where it just goes straight. Straight, as far as you can. And I can't attack with it. But... No, because you can't see what, what would be going on. All right. Silas. Okay. Now two people have passed over the, the walkway in front of you. Mm-hmm. Sorry I knocked off some rocks. <laughs> That's fine. Down into the drink. <laughs> Unfortunately. No. Uh, you slide off to the side once more and are holding on and don't make it yep. don't make a recovery so you're still stuck there yep okay this thing let's see if it can do it properly this time oh, okay so the strange uh, egg spider creature thing technically thing uh, starts moving all around you uh, what magic items do you have on you? Uh, my rings and the brooch. My, right. my, yeah, my ring and the brooch. Okay, the ring is one. The brooch is two. Uh, it wraps around the brooch and plucks it off. 
No. And no, you still don't hear any any voice at this point. <laughs> so it's probably saying something. You get the you get the stance from the egg kind of shifting slightly that it said something, but you don't know what it was. Uh, but it has taken your brooch. So if you have effects yeah. from the brooch, then remove those effects at the moment. Yep. Uh, this thing, the other one. The other one will lash out with the tentacle. Uh, which, Annie, you see pass straight through the spiritual weapon with no effect. Because they are not physical. They're not physical things, right? That was how it was supposed to be interpreted? Yeah. Yeah, spectral weapons, yeah. Um, that is its turn. Annie, you feel the loss of the magical energy that was wrapping around you. I no longer have resistance to forest damage. Uh, which kind of sucks. Uh, and so, I am suddenly magic missiles to... pass from everywhere. And, no, that would be just mean. Yep. Um. Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna try to stab the spider at disadvantage. Okay. Double sevens. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, the spider that's holding you. It kind of angles you in a way where the, the the rapier looks like it's going straight in and just kind of glances off to one side, and you kind of end up with that arm somewhat extended out there, held in place, and you kind of just drag it back a little bit. But unfortunately, you're still stuck. You're yep. still trying to put this dude in front of me so that to try to line up a better hit for someone else. Okay. Yeah, the wriggling of the of the uh, arm to get the rapier out also serves as sort of a distraction for it for the moment. Medric, yep. you see behind you or hear behind you that Silas, Silas has fallen down once again. He seems to be having a hard time moving on his own. Yeah, we both are. <laughs> um, if I retrace my steps, do I have to make an athletics check? I'm going to say no for now. Because it is ground that you all you, you have passed through, so So I'm gonna like go back, pick up Silas, like just do a mighty heave okay. and like throw him on my shoulder. Okay, athletics check. Oh, wow. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Uh, as you kind of reach down and and grab what? Silas by the by the back of the jacket, and kind of heave him up uh, onto your shoulder, effectively, it's a little bit awkward with the, the uh, it's a little awkward with the shield, and you you probably have to hang the hammer at the moment because you're going to need that free yeah. hand as well. Uh, but you have him on on hand. You do see that the ground around you is starting to crumble a little bit with the extra weight, but it's holding for the moment. Okay, so how many steps can I still take? Uh, so that was four, because you had to do double movement, because it is still difficult terrain. Right. Uh, so we'd have uh, uh, one more. Yeah. Effectively, yeah. Okay. And Silas is moving with you now. Uh, Silas, you are being moved. <laughs> Unless you object to this. Um, thanks, you can let me down here. Are you sure? Yep. Okay. <laughs> and like I'll yeah. offer no resistance to him getting down. <laughs> Hold on to him like a yo-yo. No, Three. you're my toy now. Uh, and the ground is only I... difficult terrain here at the moment because uh, only one person's passed this yeah. far. Yeah, now Medrick gets to make it, uh, all the acrobatics saves. Mm-hmm. Um, can I see any through that Let's little door? Uh, you can just make out the edge of her, yes. And you can see that she's wrapped in tendrils. Struggling against it. I don't think there's anything I can do about it, but... Uh... You can just watch me die, it's fine. Mm. No. <laughs> yeah...
Um, no, that would actually uh, just a second. Um, would seeing the tentacles count as seeing it? You could target the tentacles, yep. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, just gotta check what this does. If it is a targeted roll, I would say a, a, a one would be bad, but, uh... I think it's a save. Okay. Uh, I just need to find it. Uh, okay. No, no, there we go. Cast. Oh! Casting time of bonus action. I did not know that. Hmm. Uh, range 90. Feet. Okay. Um. When you're getting out of a grapple, the person who's got you grappled, it has to be an athletics check, doesn't it? Um, the like, person who's grappled gets... can, can, can choose to make athletics or acrobatics. Yeah, a person that's grappled can choose, but the grappling person, I believe it has to be an athletics role. I mean, it's, it's technically a static DC. I suppose. Well, no, for grapples it's not. Well, okay, maybe for its ability it is, yeah. but... Uh, for normal grapples, it isn't. Uh... It's not considered a contested grapple in that way. It's a skill mm. challenge. Well, just because this is the only thing I can do, uh, I can actually move three closer since I don't need to use my action. Um, and yeah, okay. Oh, and from this point, I can probably see the spidery thing. Uh, let's just check here. Oh, from there, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the um, spider egg. You can also see the crystal. Uh, you can just make out that there is a tendril flowing from the crystal to the spidery thing. Okay. Um, well, Silas is going to uh, give the spider creature... Well, crap, which one? Okay, I'll give the spider creature uh, the old evil eye. That's the one that's wrapped around uh, wrapped around Annie. Uh, sure, uh, whichever one looks the most attacky. Uh, um, well, this one is definitely holding on to Annie at the moment. The other one just seems to be sort of sending out arms to kind of poke and prod. Yeah, but that one could attack. So, yep. uh, I'm gonna hex its strength. Okay, again, this this one or this one? Not something he's done before, the spidery one. Okay, well, they're uh, both the, spidery, so... The egg, uh, yeah, the egg, the egg or the not? The not egg sack one. Okay, all right. Uh, what, is that a save or is that a... No. Oh, <laughs> nice. That actually is a nothing. Okay, what's the effect? Uh, it has disadvantage on all strength checks. Uh, well, on all ability checks made involving strengths. Okay, all right. What I will say is for the person who is held, that will make it at advantage to escape. Uh, cool. As it is weakened. Uh, let's see if I have one that's... Yes. And you might see Silas's eyes flash uh, almost a little reflective uh, at that point. Uh, and he's focusing intently on the gray one. And that's uh, it for his turn. Okay, let's we'll make it as afflicted. Uh, yeah, you can also notice, uh, Annie, that the, the, the tendrils don't seem to be wrapped as tightly around you. Nice. Uh, that is its turn, however. Do, do, do. Ah. No. And, and the poking and the prodding has now found the ring. Now, this will be a contested check as it tries to wrap its tendrils around your finger and pull the ring off your hand. This would be an, uh, you could choose acrobatics or athletics. That's your choice. I would like a, uh, acrobatics. And it's going to use its strength. Uh, I don't think it has any 
skills. Ooh, you are managing to kind of close your fist enough or actually move your hand wriggling back and forth so that the ring every time it slides, slides a little bit, it then kind of catches uh, and it's holding on to it. But now it seems, if there was a way to characterize a thing like this, excited might actually be what you would call it. Uh, the other one, oh, what is the range on that? Oh, not quite enough. Hmm. The other one is going to... Yeah. It's going to move slightly. Because it, it sees another query, query, which actually drags Annie with it <laughs> away from the thing, breaking contact for the moment. Uh, and the... the the tentacle arms kind of reach out towards Annie as it's just discovered an interesting prize and that's kind of ripped out of its, ha its grasp, grasp for a moment. Uh, and it will try to send, the one that moves tries to send additional tendrils towards Silas. So. Uh, but unfortunately, they sort of move ineffectually around you, perhaps because uh, it is uh, weakened hard to say uh, or just ineffective at the moment uh, let's see Annie it seems to be somewhat distracted away from you and the tendrils have loosened it's also pulled you out of the grasp of the other thing that was seeking your ring cool uh, so acrobatics at advantage to try to get it correct that's it that's indeed there you go and with that uh, with the intention of this thing turned away you find an opening and step loosely out of the tendrils which sort of retract into the body and become legs once more. Um, I will go here, disengage and go here. Okay. And you're no longer... And that is my turn. No longer grappled. How long does that uh, Hex of Strength last, by the way? Uh, it uh, is up to an hour, but mm -hmm. it is uh, concentration. Okay. That's awesome. Also, it doesn't affect its attacks. It's only ability checks. Yeah. Uh, or this ability to hold people. Uh, Medric. Okay, I'm going to use my normal movement, so three squares, make so, the acrobatics check. Yes, because this has been uh, done. Okay, uh, you're, good enough? you're finding your, your footing now. Uh, you're kind of trying to remember, okay, Silas stepped here, and then he stepped here, and then he stepped there. And those are all the loose rock spots, so I'm going to step elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Do I see the spider? Uh, you can... Let's see here. Let's make a line just to see. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot see that one. The one right there is just beyond the wall. You get the sense that it's there because there's there, you saw something reaching out the door towards Silas, but it retracted... If I use uh, my action, can I take the full movement if I dash? You can, yes. You essentially, yeah. yeah. You're still doing three. Still doing a half movement because it's still difficult terrain. And you need right. to make another acrobatics check because that's also dangerous ground. Because two people I have to make have... it like multiple times? or yeah, Because you're moving again, essentially. Hey. Yeah, no problem. Again, kind of following almost literally in uh, Silas's step. You can, however, have, make out that, and you can move your spiritual weapon. Try to crash this thing from behind. Uh, 13 is your hit. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because of the way you kind of rushed up there, and you look at it, and you see the spiritual weapon now, which you kind of knew was still around, you have that sense of its existence, uh, but then you rush and say, okay, now attack this thing. And it kind of swings forward and lurches forward, but unfortunately swings too uh, too high for the creature as its strange nimbus cloud-like form uh, shifts and twists. So you missed, unfortunately. Anyways, uh, Silas, you see this thing kind of boxed in, in a way, between you and uh, the spiritual weapon. Medric has finally caught up with you. Uh, I'm going to stay here so Medric can move past me to fight it. Uh, 
but you can make out the other egg creature though you can see it yep yeah it's not a lot i can do here but hmm let's see how smart it is i'm hoping for smart because smart can be fooled <laughs> um yes i'm going to use misty visions Ooh. uh sorry uh, mirage and uh which is oh crap that's silent oh, wait a minute i can do a spell and a uh cantrip that's, nope that's not never mind um yeah i am going to uh make an image of annie here moving across uh here to the crystal and fading out as she goes okay as though she turned invisible does that last for a while or is that just a, an immediate uh oh it it's uh it lasts uh concentration and i the other one drops okay um so i'm pretty sure it's concentration what's the name of, of the spell pat uh silent image i almost have it there we go yeah concentration up to 10 minutes okay so what i will do is i will clone instead of completely invisible it'll be like see-through shimmery and she'll be working on the uh uh the crystal okay and what i will do is i will rotate that one upside down so we know that it's not actually any mm -hmm. uh, as it approaches though it will make a, an attempt to lash out at it uh, let's see what can it do yeah it's only a dc 13 for it to do something that sees through it well, it's first going to lash out at it and then see if it sits it's through it um it does lash out, and I'll give it a chance to make a perception check. Whoa! It is very perceptive. Yeah, it, it does not. What, it doesn't know what it is, but it doesn't seem to be real, so so to speak. But then again, what is real? Yep, that's fine. Okay, uh, that was Silas. Now it's turn. Let's see, what does it want to try to do? Oh, it can see Silas now. Mm -hmm. Within your mind, you start to hear whispers of voices, indistinct, but maddeningly close to being distinct. Make a wisdom saving throw. Where does she go? There it is. Uh, let's see. Unfortunately, that is a fail. As the uh, words start... Yep, sorry. Is it a magical thing, and is the second one fail? Oh, actually, it is a magical thing, and the second one does not fail. So as okay. the voices kind of become less distinct and the words become maddeningly close to reality, you're able to kind of shut off that part of your mental hearing and feel the effect wash away. It's, it's turn for that. Hmm. All right. I yell at it to stay out of my head. The other creature that's there, though, will attempt to grapple at you. In fact, now that it sees two targets, yeah. So this creature will attempt to uh, grab onto Silas. Mm, unfortunately, uh, it... Maybe it's the fact that you resisted that. Maybe it's the fact that you recently had spell effect over it. It's hard to say what exactly is in the mind of a strange, semi-solid, spiritual spider creature. However, it does try to go for Medric. Ah, and grabs onto Medric. Medric, you see, you see these tendrils reaching out towards you and wrapping around you, holding you firm and starting to tug you... Uh, Yes, well, it's sort of tugging you. Yeah, at the moment you're you're held in place. Uh, Annie. Hello. Hello. 
Um, I am going to uh, throw a dart at the hmm. Actually, no, I'm going to go here and stab this guy. Okay. He prefers not to be stabbed and is, in fact, satisfied by not being stabbed. Yeah. Um, you kind of see that its its tendrils are, are floating, and while they both lashed out the doorway, uh, one of them has retreated, and you kind of get this weird sense of, even though there aren't any eyes that you've been able to distinguish, but you kind of get the sense that its focus is changing once more towards you. Uh, having now discovered that you're nearby. Uh, oh, hello. But that was your act, uh, your action and move. You still have some movement left. I will disengage once more. Okay. Er, never mind. It seems to have caught my drift from over there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'll give advantage to hit it. Okay. Medric, you find yourself... Okay. You hear Annie's voice swear out at, at, at uh, you hit the stupid thing. Uh, all right. Find yourself bound up by it at the moment. First of all, do I make do I make like an athletics check? If you want to try try to break free, yes. Otherwise, okay. you are. Ah. Yeah, no problem. You break free of its of its grasp. Okay. That is your action. And how much movement do you have left? That was your action, so you you still have your full movement. Okay. And your all bonus. Right. And your bonus mm -hmm. action. However, keep in mind that it is a very narrow passage right there and Silas is standing in front of you. So it is very so that's difficult an athletics, to... that's acrobatics, acrobatics, right? Yes. And don't botch it. Whew. As you somehow manage to, to lean your weight around him, doing a Matrix-like lean out, stepping almost like you're stepping into the miasma, throw your hammer in the opposite direction to give you the extra weight you needed and pull yourself back onto the stage or back onto the, the, the platform and step into the door. You right. can now see the uh, strange egg sac-like uh, creature on the other end of the room. Okay, so I can't attack, but the spiritual weapon can. Yeah, uh, yes and it, it can. has advantage. And it has advantage. Okay, let's use that advantage. Is that is that good enough, please? Unfortunately <laughs> not. The spiritual weapon, because of the 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 unlashing of the 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 tendrils that were wrapped around you, it was kind of sent roll it, rolling and rocking a little bit just in time for the spiritual weapon to come down and unfortunately miss. Uh, that is Medric's turn. Silas, you're not exactly sure how Medric managed to move around you, but somehow he managed to find a, one one stone that was not uh, overturned. Mm -hmm. I was looking at Annie and I saw how she did it, so I just kind of like copied and hoped for the best. And hey, look at that! <laughs> well, lots and lots of dance lessons. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of all I got. Um, I'll move in there. Other way, Medric. I dive between his legs. <laughs> um, and... Uh, nope, I don't got that. Okay. Well, I'm going to beat him with my magical stick. <laughs> okay. Do it. Uh... Whack him. Yeah. No. Not with a nine. Unfortunately, you, you slammed down on the ground, but it wasn't there where you actually slammed down. Uh, that and was your movement in action? Yep, that's all I got. Okay. Uh, first of all, the creature at the center of the action uh, is going to lash out in two different directions. Uh, let's see, which two directions does it want to lash out in? I think Medric has to be the target of one of those, but Annie has recently re-entered its, its, uh, its attention. So it's going to try to grapple the two of them. Let's see. Against Medric. Unfortunately, cannot find purchase. The swinging of the of the hammer, your weird erratic motions to just get around the stones themselves. That seems to be enough for it to be having problems. Uh, catching Annie. 
Ooh, Annie, on the other hand, it seems to have a firm grasp on. It understands her. It knows the shape of her. It knows how to hold on tightly and manages to grip, grip onto her. The other creature, Medric. You start to hear whispers in your ears. One mm -hmm. to the left, another to the right, just behind you. Something ahead, something that's just right behind your head. Make a wisdom saving throw. Ah, Oof. but you've known such such tactics before in the battlefield used by terrible uh, mages and other afflicted beings. You do not let the fear grab hold of your spark, your inner fire, and you burn it out with your mind. Uh, you that was do... the egg sack bastard, right? What's that? That was the that was coming from the egg sack bastard, right? Uh, yes, you are better. Okay. You you have a better idea that where it is actually coming from. Yes, that it seems to be coming from there. And in fact, it's followed up by curses uh, and uh, and confusion. And there's a sort of voice that both uh, Silas and Medric hear, uh, which uh, you, you, how would it say? Um, you are not the food I was to be promised. You are intruding on my life. Yeah, well, we're just getting started. That's its turn for that. Uh, and it will unleash. Uh, oh, no, actually, that was its action, so it will not unleash. It will hold that off for the moment. Uh, let's see. That is them. Annie. Well, hello again. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I am going to try to get out of this again. And this time you know exactly how to maneuver your way around it. You find that there is something that's almost like a solid core and you're able to jam your feet, which moves, uh, which move through the outer shell of it to that central core and kind of push off and using that in the wall, you shove yourself out of its grasp. Um... And I am going to give Medric advantage on his ne next attack against it again. Remember, it's just saying that somebody yeah, attacked this thing. Advantage on the next attack. And somebody, yeah, okay. Yep. Um, maybe you point out a vulnerability, that, that hard point in the middle. If you strike it there, you're more likely to hit something solid. Medric. Yep. All right. Go two-handed with a warhammer. And big swing towards the spider. Unfortunately, I said big swing towards the spider. There we go. That's better. On the on the first swing, swing through, you're like, I've got it. I'm going to hit it right in the head. And Annie says, no, no, the core. The core is where it's solid. You adjust at the last moment, and the hammer crashes into it. Let's see how, much, how bad it's off here. Oops. Splat. Oof. Nasty. Almost. Uh, as you come crashing in on that solid center core. And the whole thing kind of goes, ba bam down to the ground, almost as though you completely crushed it. Its, it's limbs all fold up a little bit, and then it slowly, wearily starts to, uh, starts to straighten itself up and stand up once more. Not dead, but severely wounded. And then I suspect another attack is coming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as the spiritual weapon now um, swings while on fire oh that's nice. nice that is very definitely nice how much damage does this thing do fuck oh, absolutely oh, no. oh wow is that it is not enough unfortunately Jesus as you as again it kind of straightens back up and then ba bam knocks back down to the ground and you think this time for sure it must be nope just trying to Straighten up a little bit. Not happy. Silas, you see this creature wounded and desperate at your feet. You also see the other creature, which does not appear to be that badly damaged. Uh, and this is the one that has the link to the crystal? It is. Okay. Well, I'll take a crack at it. So 22. You're so you're moving over or... to it? No, no, the... The one that we're beating on. Oh, okay. Uh, 22 yeah. definitely hits, and I'm pretty sure you do at least one point of damage. Yep. 
I do eight. That's that's all it really, <laughs> all it really had left was that one point of damage. As I'm glad time, it's gone, but like, I just kind of side eye Silas. It's like kill stealer. <laughs> As this time, <laughs> the, I'm sure that failed to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the uh, the creature kind of goes crashing to the ground, and this time it kind of turns almost immediately into a, a, a sort of ash that floats there. Uh, oh, you can remove the duplicate, Annie. Uh, well, it's a concentration it's a... spell, right? Yep, but once it doesn't seem to have any effect on the big guy, he stops con- he stops uh, oh, concentrating okay. on it. Um, and... Yeah. He's going to recharge the staff with a threatening look at uh, at the beastie. Uh, and then stay the heck away from it. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. I think he'll move there, but that's about it. Okay. Uh, it's turn. Um, you kind of see the, the egg as the small limbs have kind of come out of it. And this time, larger, improbably large limbs prop up out of the thing uh, as it seems to almost invert in place where the egg becomes its lower abdomen now and the rest of the body is revealed. Uh, The limbs are huge, not in game terms, but actually in physical terms, each one being as thick as your arm. Uh, And it... It moves, let's see, actually it doesn't have to move, uh, as it kind of, from within the, the carapace, larger legs form. This thing now has 10, 15 limbs all around it, like a spider gone mad. Uh, a, a glistening uh, white carapace, actually, compared to the, the white shell that was on the outside. And all of those limbs whip out towards each of you. Uh, let's see. First up on Medric. And also the spiritual weapon doesn't know that it's not a thing. It's not that smart. Uh, let's see. Towards, or sorry, let me start with, uh, well, I'm going to do them in order. Uh, Annie first. And Annie knows how to avoid tentacles now. She's been caught too many times by these before. The spiritual weapon. Ah, it it fails to grasp onto the spiritual weapon, not realizing it's not substantial enough. Uh, Medric. Yep. 17? Yeah, that barely hits. Okay. Oh, sorry. I was using the wrong stats. Do, 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 do. It's this guy. This guy does a lot more. Do, 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 do. Hopefully he'll roll low. Actually, no. It just holds on to you. Okay. Uh, it would have been rolling better, but I don't think two would have made a difference to uh, Annie. Uh, so you find this time they are large and fleshy, and you can feel um, kind of little grasping teeth on the inside of this coil of, of legs. Kind of realizing, though, that the it's not teeth. It's like, it's like small, very sharp hair that coats Gross. the outside of it. And it wraps you very, very tightly. In fact, you find yourself um, uh, with your arms bound tightly to your sides. Uh, you will actually, while you're grappled, also are restrained. And you have disadvantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Oh, man. Um, towards Silas. Uh, I think that's a miss. Um, yes. So, uh, of all of you, he's grappled onto, uh, oh, okay, grappled onto Medric, and then proceeds to pull Medric across the room. Uh, yeah, actually all the way across the room until you're standing right beside it. Uh, that is its ability, then it will make, hmm... Yeah, it will try to attack. Uh, it has advantage. Does an 18 hit? Yep. Okay. Uh, you take... 
Let's see how bad this is going to get. <laughs> this could be very painful. It's pretty painful. Yeah, well. As it lurches forward, and you both, uh, the other two, Silas and Annie, you watch as it swallows Medric and pulls it That's into its carapace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is Medric still conscious? No, uh, but nope. F orc resolve, like, or whatever it's called. Yeah, so when That's I play true. at zero, I go back to one. <laughs> yep, and you find yourself constrained on the inside of this, this creature. So effectively, we'll put you right there. Not in a great position. Uh, that yeah. is its turn. Annie. Medric has vanished. But you can kind of see the, the, the body of this creature where it's kind of absorbed him in, moving slightly as though Medric is still kicking and trying to push around. Well. So, Annie, the crystal. Yup. Uh, I'm going to... Try to sidestep it as much as possible. Uh, one, two, gonna go through there. Okay, it will have an attack of opportunity as you pass on by. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, Actually, I'll disengage. Okay, use your bonus to yep. disengage. Yep, that works. Uh, and that was. That's all 30 feet. Uh, and what did we say works? Religion is what I was doing. Uh, we know were... religion, arcane, and... Not 20. Nice. Nice. Woo! Um, as you, once again, focus on the crystal. Difficult with your friend just having been recently swallowed and with the, the uh, creature having been uh, kind of s snapping at you as you moved on by... But you once again draw a deep breath. Think back to your training. Think back to those those really, really dull lectures in which you were taught all of these arcane things that you would never ever need to know. And now you silently give a little thanks. <laughs> you have a little little thanks that it comes to mind. And you kind of reach in and align the symbols as necessary. It begins to brighten. Uh, and uh, once more comes to normal brightness. It had been dimmed when you came in the room. Uh, but you get the sense that uh, it is uh, uh, it is coming back to life. Roll me a d12, please. One d12. Awesome. Nice. Just got to move that guy out of the way. As you see the... Oops. Uh, as you see the light energy kind of moving back along the tendril, which is connected to the egg sac creature. And it shifts uncomfortably as you see a surge of energy pass into it. Around you, Medric, you feel this sort of um, bright, uh, uh, I almost want to describe it as a web, but bright interleaving. Um, think of it kind of like uh, it's tracing the 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 uh, veins and arteries of this creature as this energy gets pulsed through it. And you feel the thing kind of, as it's wrapped around you, uh, very uh, nervously twitch with, uh, with anger. That was right. Annie's turn. Medric, you're in a bad way. Yeah, I'm going to grab the Amulet of Ignis because I know where it is, even though everything's like dark and slimy and gross around me. Mm -hmm. So I'll grab that and cast Channel Divinity because fuck it. <laughs> there you go. What Channel Divinity are you casting? I only have one, a Glory of Midday. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So, so it needs to make a DC of con yeah, con DC 12 Constitution saving throw. Okay. Uh, let's see. What is it there? Uh, unfortunately, it makes it a 14. Crap. Is it and half then it damage? takes two... Hmm? Is it half damage when it saves? I forget that one. Yeah. Okay. And it's going to be this much radiant damage. Nice. Seriously? <laughs> it's fucking rolls today, man. It's uh, nice from my point of view. Uh, describe what this looks like for those who would be outside the creature. So whichever, like however many orifices the creature has, just like all light up with a burst of light. Okay. And it kind of like expands outward a little bit too. 
there's there's a sort of yeah like it swallowed an explosion that has uh, gone off inside of it and you can see actually the semi-translucent skin uh lets some of the light out and within you see the the brightly lit figure of medric as this sort of wave washes over and outside the creature it writhes in pain uh, but then uh, uh, still manages to to hold on to its incorporeal fl uh, form. So I'll call the spiritual weapon to me. Uh, you can't see it. They can't like feel where it is, or not really. It was meant to be on. It was meant to be sight, right? So that's where we established it before. Do I see out of the creature's mouth? No. <laughs> Briefly, as it ex like partly explodes. You, you you were literally absorbed into its body rather than uh, rather than that. Okay. And it doesn't have a mouth as such. It doesn't actually speak out loud. All right. Well, the weapon's gone then. Oh, concentration has faded. Or no, it's a uh, bunch of time. Yep. Which does cause some concern. We we established earlier that line of sight was necessary to control the weapon, so Okay. Um you don't happen to have a healing word, do you? Uh yeah, I think so. It's probably not gonna do anything, but Yeah, but it's a bo it's a bonus action, so you can do it even though you've done the other stuff. Alright, then I will cast healing word on myself. One D4. I get five hit points back. Whee! Hey. I suppose six is better than one. As the flame burns around you in this uh, moment of of uh, healing where you draw deeply upon the, the power of ignis you notice the flames lick up around the creature as well as it also takes damage from your healing or rather from ah. the the flames that are a byproduct of your healing uh let's see that is medric's turn yeah. move is not really possible at the moment <laughs> nope. uh, let's see silas Perhaps disturbingly, while there is that bright flash of light, the weapon that was a uh, spiritual weapon wielded by Medric vanishes. Silas is seriously hoping that Medric is not dead. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and he's it's... hopeful because of the amount of fire that just happened. Mm. Uh, I think the most it's... explosive character out of all of us. <laughs> Uh, it probably gets an attack of opportunity against me since it couldn't against Annie. It uh, it does. Uh, let's see. It would be that. I don't think an 11 hits. Maybe not enough. Uh, and then for his action, uh, he is going to try to uh, make things all better with an arcana roll. Yeah, that's not enough. Yeah, unfortunately, the way that the things were configured by Annie kind of draws your attention away from the interpretation you were making before, and it, it kind of starts to conflict in your mind. Yep. Uh, its turn. Let's see. Well, it has you there. So why not try to do this again? It's not holding anything. So it will... Oh, hmm. How confident does it feel? I'm going to have it make a charisma saving throw about being too overconfident. So over 10, it's over, it's over, sorry, under 10, it's overconfident. It's overconfident. So it's going to attack instead. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so it will attempt to attack uh, Annie. Ooh. It's really too overconfident as it lashes out with you. And maybe it's because of the proximity of the light, which has recently grown in the, in the crystal. It seems to try to reach out to you, but seems to almost be shy to do so. Uh, against Silas, however, it is able to grapple into Cy Cyrus, Silas uh, and drags you towards it. It attempts to bite 
which it succeeds at. Uh, however, it is already eating someone, so it can't swallow you whole. Uh, it can, however, do a substantial amount of damage, but does not. Holy crap. Right. <laughs> it's not from the roll, anyway. As it chomps down on you, is unable to swallow you whole. Uh, it's probably because it's still digesting. However, it does hurt t tremendously as this body... It's I, I describe it as a bite. It's not really a bite so much as it's sort of trying to envelop you. And all of these little tiny spikes of its, uh, of its uh, hair are kind of gripping into you and kind of shredding you a little bit. But it does have you in, in, held in hand. Annie, things are looking desperate. I'm going to try to do the, the thing with the crystal again. Okay. No. Unfortunately, the symbols look like they're right, and you can't figure out how am I going to adjust them to get them to make that effect again. Um, and I'm going to try to use me trying to get this thing to work as a distraction to the thing to try to give someone advantage on hitting okay. it. All right. You're kind of making a big show of like, I can do this. This is no problem. You realize that you're going to be dying in a moment because I've got control of this. Uh, make a persuasion yeah. roll, actually. I'm, I'm really good at that. You are. Okay. Yeah, you definitely have its attention. Uh, Medric, from within. I just sign my death warrant? Maybe. Who knows? So I have, a, I have advantage to hit it? Uh, you do have advantage to hit it, but you have disadvantage because you're grappled or you're uh, restrained. Well, the only reason it was able to grapple me and eat me was because my AC was lower because I wasn't using my shield. So that means I got two hands on the Warhammer. So orienting myself like towards you know, like, you know, wh wherever I think his head is or like its vitals are, I will again grab the Warhammer with two hands and just like bash it upwards. <laughs> okay. So it does as much damage as possible. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, you're having a hard time kind of maneuvering around, and while you don't aren't using the shield explicitly, it's still there and still kind of pressed against you, and you find yourself trying to like, eh, 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 and it's not making any any uh, motion. Unfortunately, well, healing word on myself a second time because it's a bonus action. Okay. No, oh, man, that's only three. Uh, but once again, as the flames lick up around you, they also seem to burn the uh, the creature from the inside. On the outside, once again, especially Silas, you see this sort of uh, brief yellow and gold glow from within, and you're pretty sure that it's it's still Medric fighting for his life within there. The creature's also looking a little bit less for wear. You can kind of make out where some of its, its uh, carapace, some of its center part, is actually turning to ash and sort of floating into this cloud around it. Uh, it might be desperate. Well, I'm going to beat on it with my whacking stick. Okay. Uh, you are restrained, so you do have a disadvantage on this. That's a 12. A 12, unfortunately, is not enough. As you're kind of trying to angle it, and it just simply angles one of its own tentacles to, to make the, the, the maneuver uh, kind of moot. Okay, that's it. Okay. Uh, now you're making it feel desperate. Uh, let's see. How does it want to try that? Uh, yep, it will do the desperation action now. As it will attempt to siphon from the crystal. Oh, wow. Uh, you can kind of see it shifting and, and twisting and turning. And the, the other end of the tendril kind of spreads out, but it seems to spread out into the brighter areas and the edges of the, of the tendril uh, kind of burn and, and it retreats a little bit. It's still there, still attached, but uh, kind of shying away from the brightness you've created. Um, that's, that's its action. Yeah, it's done. Okay. So I'm going to try to religion this again. Ooh. No. Now at this point you're starting to confuse religions and you're starting to think 
No, 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 wait. I have to undo that part because this part was inverted because uh, the way they fell from, from the graces, that means that, and then the thing goes somewhat dark. As unfortunately, you disrupted some of the symbols within. Oh, no. Uh, and... Yeah, I'm once again going to try to get its attention to try to give someone advantage. Okay. Make a persuasion check again. Or if you want to use performance or something else, you're welcome to. Uh, persuasion is better than performance for me. Okay. That's that's definitely got its attention once more. Um, how do you frame this? Uh, what what are you saying or what are you doing that that beyond what I've described before? Do you have an idea? Not really. It's working. She she is faking it until she makes it. Why? But it's working. So it goes a little dim. You're like, I meant to do that. I meant to do that. Supposed to do that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Medric. How bad does this thing feel like it is? You're finding it a little bit easier to move. It's still quite tightly constraining to you, but you kind of see a little bit of of a stretch in thin wear. Um, you were hopeful for a moment because the light was bright outside and you could kind of make out little patches where its its form might have been thinner, but then the light went dim, and now you're yeah. not quite sure uh, where those patches were again. Well, I'm feeling pretty bad because, you know, being eaten by a thing and partially digested, so I'm going to heal myself at level two with cure wounds. Okay. And I could feel that the creature was uncomfortable whenever I heal, whenever I healed myself before. Indeed. So it, I get that much HP back, and it takes that much fire damage. So as you draw upon the the, uh, the flames of Ignis, as you as you reach and touch the ever flame, allowing it to flow not only through your your heart and your mind and your soul, but even out across your skin, igniting your skin uh, in that in that way that only Kamar can survive, in the way that only Kamar know, uh, you engulf yourself in a ball of flame. On the outside, Silas, you see the flames start to lick up through one or two places on the carapace of this creature. And then suddenly there's a burst of flame, and the creature dissolves into a pile of ash, dropping Silas as it does. It is dead. You managed to kill it from the inside, which is not one of the expected results, but kind of makes sense. As, uh, as Medric, on fire, emerges from the center of this creature, standing up and finally breathing well, for the first time in a few few seconds. Ugh, that feels better. Hey, Medric, you're on fire today. <laughs> uh, Medric and Silas, both of you Guys, make. Well. <laughs> both of you make perception checks. Okay. Both of you reveling in, in the, uh, the moment, the flames dying down around Medric, the creature's uh, essence having been returned to or created and turned into a, a, uh, a cloud of ash. Both of you notice a small movement of light as there does seem to be light still coming from the tendril which is attached to the crystal cool. and appears to be flowing towards the cloud of ash which has not dissipated entirely. That was Medric's turn. Silas. Silas is going to come over here and try again. Okay. All right. This hey. time, perhaps it's because the symbols that were there before, the religious symbols that were aligned, the story that was trying to told, was just disrupted by Annie. Uh, now you can see the deeper arcanic uh, elements of it, and you reach in and kind of readjust the flow of energy beyond the symbols. And once again, it lights up bright. Uh, however, uh, is not fully lit at the moment still. Oh. Uh, but you've returned back to that steady state. Uh, and yeah, in, in desperation, let's see if this works. In desperation, the final pull along the line of energy. You see the light dim. And a wane kind of light blue 
color flows along the tendril back to the creature as it was successful in siphoning as its last action. Around you, Medric, you see the creature's form start to shape once more. As it comes back to life. Uh, let's see. That is its turn, though. Annie? Hello. Uh, I am going to try to do this again, because... <laughs> okay. No. No, the way that uh, that uh, Silas has just aligned the energy changes the meaning of the symbols you were trying to understand and, and uh, create. It doesn't seem to make any sense anymore. It's telling an entirely different story. Yup. Confusing. Um, but I will... Again, try to persuade the thing to <laughs> yeah, give people advantage. Okay. You, you get a sense of its desperation now. That's the final poll that it managed to do. Uh, just kind of concentrated everything that it had in that moment. And now it's definitely concerned. Medric. Is it still like eating me, or am I out of it now? You're it's... out of it now. You kind of stepped up, kind of out of the out of the corpse, and it's sort of reformed behind you. All right. Well, hammer to the face, with advantage, <laughs> two-handed. Sure. Or whatever it has that counts for a face. It doesn't really have a face as such. Twenty-one is nice. And the the first kind of swing starts to miss. Uh, and you feel like, no, it's not going to twitch out of my way this time, and you collide with it with a second st second swing. Once again, knocking away, this time knocking away a couple of the tentacles that, that were there, uh, which kind of dissolve into mist away from it, uh, but not yet killing it. Silas. Okay. Again, 24. reaching in. It's kind of like the, the the opposite twins here. One keeps doing it well, and then the other one gets on, undoing it, and then it comes back again. I mean, the, fact, the fact that my nat 20 didn't also do something great, like, makes me kind of sad. <laughs> Unfortunately, skill checks don't really re re react to nat 20s in the same way. Uh, they also I mean, it reacts to nat 1 the same way. Uh, well... Yes, there's still a chance to utterly fail. There's just not a chance to utterly succeed. Uh, the uh, Once again, you find ways to reach into the insubstantial parts of the crystal and realign the energies. It glows brightly once more. Uh, back around its turn. I think despite the fact that it's missing a tentacle, despite the desperation it feels, it's going to try to attack all three of you. Hmm. Oh, it's a tough choice. What do you do as a creature? Do you? Yeah, I think it's going to try to attack. So we're starting with uh, Annie. That's a miss. Uh, next to Medric. That's a miss. miss. And next to Silas. Is oh, that no. a hit? Probably. Yep, that's a hit. This time reaching out with his tentacles and... Uh, Yep, dragging you towards it. But I'm going to say it's going to do a defensive action and use you as a shield against Medric. So it's not going to try to attack you, but it is going to basically take the dodge action uh, with with uh, Medric as its... or with... Uh, or rather, more like a shield action, essentially, with, uh, with Silas as its shield. Annie... I'm going to try to do the, the crystal thing. This time, you realize the story that it's telling. It's an old one, one that you'd kind of forgotten. And it relates to when the gods first came to the world and how they constructed it and how they built this, this world upon the very fundamental energy that existed and created within it spaces of light. A simple story, an old one, and one that can be easily confused for the thousands of stories told since then. You align the crystals. It glows brightly. 
and then there's a flash of brilliant white gold energy. It swarms over the room, obliterating the remains now of this strange spider egg creature, restoring each of you to your full hit points and re Yay. restoring within you a feeling of peace. Far above you, you hear the sound of Cathron, a growl, a growl of satisfaction. The miasma of blue begins to glow brightly and start to climb higher. You can, from where you are, unless you step out of the room, all you can see is an increasing uh, white, silver, blue glow as it rises and starts to sweep up over the edges. Are you going to do anything? Um, no, I don't think so. She's going, yes. We really can do. <laughs> mm hmm. Okay. Just, I guess watch. Prepare for the best. Yup. It's uh, like, call out to Catherine. It's like, hey, I can, can we get a lift? <laughs> As you kind of call outward, you see the miasma start to flow across the floor that you're in. It creeps across the floor, not entirely unlike water, but with this glow and richness you would not expect. Little sparkles of light are seen within it. And as it covers across, it starts to flow over your feet. But it doesn't feel like water. It doesn't flow into the nooks and crannies of your boots, of your, of your armor. It seems to wrap around you almost like it is uh, a blanket of ice as it is cold and forces you to shiver. It surges Oh, upward. I know. Hmm? I know what I would like to do. I would like to try to get my brooch back. I was wondering if you were going to try that. Make an yes. investigation check with advantage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, within the, the ash pile, uh, you do find the brooch once more. Slightly stained, right. but unharmed. Is there anything else in there? Uh, you kind of kick your feet through it, and it kind of vanishes. And as the miasma moves over it, it just melts away like uh, ice in hot, in hot water. The water surges upward, touches the crystal, and all of you see a vision. This is more dreamlike than anything you've experienced so far. You get the sense of moving along a long silver blue line very, very rapidly, tracing past blurry images and people, snatches of conversation that you can't quite make out, voices that are sometimes familiar and sometimes not. In the distance, a darkened line seems to lead to a nightmare. Someone screams, there is pain, and then it flashes by in an instant. You end up in a vision that I would like each of you to make an insight check for. Okay. For Medric, you are standing on a wooden platform. The platform moves slightly as if floating in water. It reminds you entirely of being at sea. And you look around and see in, indeed the blue miasma taking the form of sea. Large waves cresting and uh, the smell of a salt breeze reaches your nostrils. Mm -hmm. Off in the distance, standing on a wooden platform that rises 50 feet or so up and above the water, you see the shape of a woman um, barely recognizable, looks human, but as you stare at it, kind of shifts to elven, and then strangely, you realize it's a gnome, or a, an orc, or it constantly keeps changing within your mind. She looks out towards the distant sea, and waves a handkerchief, uh, but then reaches back and holds the hand of someone else another shadowy figure that seems to hold it close. For Annie and Silas, while these things are seen in front of you, 
there is a sense of unreality. There's a sense of two-dimensionality to all of this, as though this is not reality as you know it. This is reality as you might imagine it. This is a story made reality, not so much a reality that existed, or, or if it did exist, it's only a ref pale reflection of it. This is not a scene of something that exists. This is a metaphor or a description or a story. Um, for, um, let's see, for Silas, there's something about the way the, the woman is placed. Looking out towards sea as if bidding farewell to someone who's over the horizon, and yet reaching backward to someone else, someone who's replacing the one that they're missing. There's another flash as the miasma rises up, and for a brief moment, it is as though you are drowning. And then you fall as though, as though through a whirlpool, down and now into another one of these conduits. Uh, you've, you've moved now, no sense of body and yet a sense of self, a sense of each other, but you can, cannot see each other, but you know where they are. Um, this time, you land in a room, poured out of a jug, like water being filled into glasses. And each of you are filled into a separate glass that stands on this massive banquet table. Everything is in shadow, but little points of light seems to come from something that might be a fireplace, something that might be a candle, something that might be a lantern, a room with indistinct shadowed walls, and people that are laughing and enjoying themselves, the clink of glasses. Uh, Medric, as a glass, you feel yourself being lifted. It is a disorienting experience. It comes closer to a face that mostly seems in shadow, but has brilliant blue eyes. And you are drunk. Not as in you've had the alcohol, but as you are the water that is being drunk. And you feel yourself absorbed. You feel your energy and strength sapping away. And you feel the creature around you. Not entirely dissimilar to the way you were, you were absorbed by the, the uh, spider egg before as though it is draining away your energy and the laughter comes from outside. For Silas, you are tipped over by accident as some reveler laughs and the glass is spilled. You pour out over the table, but you are thick and viscous, not like water at all. You um, feel yourself kind of seeping towards the edge. There is a confusion around you, a kerfuffle, and people are desperate Leech, lurching towards the table itself and looking at your liquid form, absorbing you, desperate, but some of you uh, leeches into the table itself. The table grows um, a new branch flying out from one of its wooden areas as though it was reborn. For Annie, someone holds you in the glass high mm -hmm. as if to do a toast. And you look down upon the table, and you're alarmed to see a face, a body, disconnected pieces, not in a grotesque way, but in, a, in almost a fantastical way. There's a leg, there's an arm, a second arm, a head, a round face, curly brown hair, brown eyes. It looks up at you. The face does not look angry or upset. It looks content. It looks, it looks as though it is half asleep, but its torso is open. Someone takes out a roast of lamb from the torso and serves it on a plate. When they cut it, it is bloody and runs over the table and they hand out pieces to the people that are there. Much like handing out cake. Again, the bodies are indistinct, but you see them there. As each person eats a piece of it, there's a satisfied uh, uh, moan of happiness, of rejuvenation. 
You feel the glass tipped back, and a small amount of you remains in the bottom. The glass is then taken and thrown into the fire, and for a moment you feel the heat as the glass around you shatters, and then your consciousness, and that of Medric, and that of Silas, is drawn once more back into the pitcher and back into an ever-deepening stream once again, flowing along a silver and blue line. This time, you are flowing underground. Tunnels, dark and cramped, but not to you, not to the water that moves through them. Cramped to a humanoid figure that you see creeping along, dragging something. Is it a body? You think it's a body. The water, you, flow around its feet, flow around the body. It looks like a soft face, bald. Is that hair in the back of the head? There's a large wound across the skull. Red, crimson lines that show where something had, had impacted it. The person dragging you along in the water, dragging them in the along in, in you, the water, whistles slightly to themselves. It's a horrible tune, one you recognize, Silas, but done poorly as if they don't really know how to whistle, but they like the tune. It's one you've actually sung before in, in one of the inns. It's an old song, something about birds and weather. They move along this ever-running flow of you, of the water, pass underneath the grate. One wane uh, uh, red light, or rain, uh, should say yellow red light from a lantern flickers overhead. They're careful and cautious, waiting for a few shadows to move overhead, then passing in deeply. They move to a door, half hidden in this sewer. It must be a sewer. They look left and right, making sure no one is around. The darkness obscures their, their uh, face, but there's a the little glint of eyes. They're probably no more than four feet tall. The door is opened. The body is thrown inside, and with it, you, the water, flow. You flow within a square box, over the top of the box, and into a small chute. Inside the square box, you float in this zigzagged pattern, sort of a Z-shaped pattern, and then flow through another drain into a long rectangle. In this room, you hear the laughter of the party. And you're swept through the drain into a silver blue light again. This time, you are flowing down as rain, pouring down upon the city of Aelthwater, which you can see from a bird's eye view. The water is pelting the bird, and it's, it's floating. It's having difficulty. It's not the water which beats its wings which causes it to fall, but a steadily drowsy rhythm, as though its wings cannot beat in time. And then it falls from a high height. You as water fall at the same speed and watch it in a slow motion as it tumbles and hits the ground. It lands in mud. Overhead, a torch hangs on the wall, illuminating this poor scene. And then the torch turns upside down and falls, suddenly dangling by the chain it was attached to. Swings back and forth, illuminating the sight of this dead bird. No one seems to notice. The water flows into the mud. You feel yourself become mud. Feet stomp over you. Traffic begins again. You seep deeper into the earth. Everything becomes dim. And you wake up, each of you, in your own beds. Sweating, wet to the touch, as if you were 
encased in water. The sun hangs low on the horizon. It is a new day. Well, that was a weird dream. I wonder how often we're doing that. Does our night of sleep count, to, count as a long rest? <laughs> you wake up fully rested. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. But you are each in your own beds. And I think Annie and Medrick, you're both staying at the Three Bells. Silas, you have your own home. Yep. Yep. Do you meet up the next and day? Like that right. was really well, I take a shower first. It's called a hot shower. <laughs> There's a weird moment where you're in the warm water and it's flowing over you. And I don't know if you've ever taken a, a warm shower on a warm day. You start to be yep. unable to really notice the water, and yet you know it's there. You can feel its impact, but the water's temperature is so close to your skin that you really can't feel the difference. And for an instant, you kind of feel like the water again. It's this weird flashback to that dream. It steams slightly, though. So pissed off, I just step out of the shower because that's uncomfortable now. <laughs> that dream ruined showers for me. <laughs> Temporarily. Annie is going to write down everything she remembers about that. Okay. Does Annie keep a journal of some kind? I kind of see Annie having a journal of some kind, a travel journal. No, she, she keeps note of her travels. This would be like on like a back page, so it's not like with her travel notes. Okay. Uh, this is just so that she doesn't forget. Because okay. that seems important. Um, she is specifically the face of the woman with the curly brown hair. Mm -hmm. She's going to describe that as much as she can. Okay. Let's make that a um, a roll just to see the degree. Let's see here. Sleight of hand, maybe? Um, what did you say? Sleight of hand, maybe? Yeah, not so much sleight of hand. Um, are you trying to draw it? Are you trying to uh, describe it? Or, uh, yeah, just describe it. Just describe it. Um, yeah. Let's make it a... Hmm. I'll be right back. Sure. Let's make it a performance check. Uh, well, hang on. Yeah, performance works. Okay. You, you capture the details, little ones, um, the kind of shade of curl and the, the tight curls to the head, the, uh, the um, eye color. Um, the body was a little harder to describe being kind of both consumed and there, but in separate pieces. She was more focused on the face. Yeah. You got a good enough description that if you saw that person you would know it was them and you would be able to describe to someone else who can make their own um, perception check essentially to try to understand your your uh, your meaning but we'll wait for for Medrick to return um, stepping back from the uh, the the combat and stepping back from that description I'm starting to feel a little sweaty myself which I don't know if that was an influence on how I was describing all that water or how I described uh, Medrick's shower but I'm suddenly realizing it's it's uh, it's gotten to be a little sweaty in here um, but mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, what I would like to do um, is we can reconvene the three of you as you get together that day and so you can discuss yep. what you've seen how about that that works. Okay. So probably meeting up at the Three Bells. Again, two of you right. are there. It's a familiar place for Silas to work as well. Mm -hmm. And they're quite quite happy to uh, to see you there again. Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's Sandra that keeps uh, coming over. She's the one who works the front of the bar most of the time, uh, and comes over is happy to see you all. 
Um, Sandy. That's what it is. Sandy Brace Girdle. Yep. The uh, place is a little bit quiet this morning. There hasn't been a caravan come in for a couple of days. So there's a lot of overflow of people. There are other pubs as well, but some of the regulars are there. There's a, a, a warm stew that's been put on for this particular day, and she offers you some of that, as well as uh, some of uh, uh, Sydney's fresh-made bread. I'll definitely take some of that. Well, did you guys have an interesting dream last night? Uh, interesting as we can describe it. And scene over. Um, that was a <laughs> short description, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain <laughs> what I remember of it. And each of you have an awareness of what you were seeing. Um, Medric, everything you see, feel, or everything you describe, and what the others would pick up very quickly, is you describe it as you were physically there, these are the things that happened. But both Silas and Annie, you had a sense that these things were as much metaphorical as they were literal. I'll explain it. I just remember being water and pretty much just getting taken through a bunch of different scenarios and it was really trippy and weird and I never want to experience this again. <laughs> oh, that part. Yeah. Yeah, that was a strange ending. I've had some strange dreams in my time, but like that was fucked up. Mine usually involve fire, like just having it switch to water just like that. I'll definitely be talking to the flame keeper about that. Yeah, put in a complaint. <laughs> My brain is saying water, not fire. <laughs> Fix this. <laughs> so I guess we helped Catherine. Yeah, has anybody heard from her? Not me. I mean, we lit four out of five crystals, and I'm pretty sure, like, in that world of fractions, that's a more than half thing. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it was enough. Uh, yeah. Well, I get, uh, I brought my horse so we can do that delivery. Yeah. All right. To name my horse. Hmm. I have to think about that. Um,. Yeah, Silas so doesn't really have much more about the dream. Uh, has Catherine given us a way to con to contact her, or is that just like a one way thing where she calls on us when she needs us? I think it's a one way thing. I mean, in your limited experience, Catherine connected to you once in a dream, and then you connected to her once by being physically in front of her. So it's not a huge sample yet. Yeah. This was if we really wanted to give us anything to contact you with. No. No, she did not. So? Hmm. I think your medrek is just eating as the discussion goes along. Yeah. The stew is filling. There's a spice they use in it, probably more than pepper. It has a nice, pleasant kind of uh, long-term warmth to it. The bread is fresh. Very uh, hearty bread meant for stew. A couple more people file in. Uh, a officious-looking person enters, wearing a fairly fancy uh, cloak, uh, really nice boots, a, uh, a hat with a, a feather in it. Looks like fairly wealthy. Uh, Sandy rolls her eyes when they come in. They go over to the bar and patiently wait for a moment while Sandy takes care of a couple of customers. I put forward. Okay. Uh, 
Sandy takes a few extra minutes, perhaps, talking with a couple of the customers. But then the uh, person uh, is over by the bar and begins to tap on the bar uh, with a, a, a lopsided smile, which doesn't reach his eyes. Looks to be a human, very, very carefully quaffed, little tiny uh, uh, chin beard, a, uh, a soul patch, very finely uh, 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 cut hair. Taps the bar with a rather gaudy looking large metal ring with a uh, sort of disproportionately small gem in it. The ring size itself might be overcompensating for the ring, uh, ring uh, gem. But kind of taps the uh, the bar, annoyed, annoyingly. But is smiling and kind of uh, winks at Sandy, who again rolls her eyes and finally goes back to the bar. Uh, steps behind the bar, steps up onto her apple crate, essentially to see eye to eye. Uh, if you remember, she's also a halfling. Um, and there are words exchanged, unless anybody's bothering to listen in. Most of the words won't be heard. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I would try to listen. I mean, this guy seems like kind of a jerk, so I want to see what's going on. Okay. Um, he's not being, he's being a little bit quiet, but not particularly whispering. Um, and he uh, simply says that the, the, the price has gone up. We are in um, difficult times, needing to continue the work on our on our wall, needing to reinforce the armies. There have been terrible news of well, others attacking. There's a new gang, I suppose, that's come into town, and we have to make sure that our citizens are safe. So I'm afraid the price will increase. It'll be 20 gold for this month. But I just paid last week, Sandy says. I know. We're collecting it twice a month now. I'll be back tomorrow. You have a wonderful establishment here. I'd hate to see you go into arrears for your taxes. It would be terrible. It was a veiled threat. Not terribly veiled, but Sandy just kind of tries to smile through it as the person turns and walks out the door. Comes back to another table and kind of angrily drops down the, the uh, stew on the table uh, sort of staring at the door with daggers. You know you're being bad. <laughs> There's a cat attacking one of the residents over in the corner. Mm -hmm. The cat started fighting for to use dice behind the computer screen. Uh, oh no. The, the, the den of lost dice. It was uh, Sandy who was talking to the guy, right? Yep. Yeah. She's kind of the front oh. of house and, and waitress and manager I'll go up to her and ask what was that about uh, that was taxes are being increased apparently there's increased attacks around town and they want to increase the size of the town guard there's also worry about water reaching the, sta the town although that stupid wall hasn't been entirely effective so far it's an ineffective wall, and they want to continue building it. Well, that makes no sense, but... Oh, it okay. has its purposes, I suppose. But if the waves are going to crest over it, they're going to crest over it. They're it... going to have to make the best wall. I would prefer they pave the streets. Whenever it rains around here, or whenever the, uh, the waters are high, so much water gets trucked up and down the streets, you can hardly move a wagon. Uh, the guy said there was attacks outside. Is the guy still in the in, in the inn, by the way? No, he went out the front door. Okay. Did he mention who was attacking or doing the attacks? Oh, he said it was some new gang. I don't know. Maybe one of the ships emptied their, their cargo of, of disreputable sailors on the town. I'm not really sure. You came in on a ship recently, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I don't suppose, we try to be reputable people, though. I don't suppose any of the people you came with would be on this um, unfortunate side. Maybe. I've seen two of them already. Well... It, it just feels weird to be fighting with your former allies. Or against your former allies. 
I suppose it does. I've never been in war myself. I prefer the tales of war much more to the actual thing. Well, if I could remember, I'd delight you with some war tales, but as you might have noticed, everybody seems to have forgotten everything. Yes, it's rather annoying. I much think that I was probably about to get married. My sister doesn't believe that. My other sister keeps teasing me about that. But I could have swore I was about to get married. Oh well. I guess that means that I'm off the hook. <laughs> you wouldn't happen to want to settle down in town, would you? And she gives you a, a uh, an overly large wink. I'll just chuckle. <laughs> Nah, I'm only teasing. You're far too tall for me anyway. I will make no anything? comment. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be okay for those taxes? That that sounds ridiculous. For them to be increased to twice a month on top of being increased? It's a racket. We're all, and she looks around very carefully, we're all very loyal to the Baron and the King, and we wish to see the town flourish. If we can, if we can convince them that they should pay for the roads rather than making a, a wall, and that they can finally get rid of this bandit problem, then I suppose the money will be worth it, and taxes will fall once more to where they should be. There haven't been that many care events come through, and business is a little tight. I'll see if I can go find the guy outside. You step outside. Uh, yeah. You see the... I'll just look around for the tacky hat. Yeah, you look up and down the street, and uh, you don't see him at first, and then he comes walking out of another business, um, looking with a self-satisfied smirk on his face. He meets with uh, two okay. soldiers who are walking with him. Sorry, lots of things crossed my brain there. Uh, I need to write a thing. May I make an insight check on what she's saying? That, like, the, just the way she's saying, like, we're all loyal. Is that hiding, like, frustration or... Okay, yep. Yeah. Kind of no. judging her, her mood. Um, yeah. Yep, yeah, she's saying everything with a smile and everything is everything's fine. Uh, Medrick, you see the... the uh, yeah. The tax collector come out once more yeah. of another building and then walk along with the two guards. I'll just approach him and say, excuse me, like in a non-threatening manner. Okay. He still kind of takes a half step back, but looks at you. Yes? Yeah. I'll I'm keep not my sure I'm familiar with you. And he uh, reaches into a pocket and pulls out a roll of paper. What's your name? Hi, I'm Medrick. Medrick. I arrived here on a ship that came back from the war that nobody remembers. Um, I overheard you talking in the Three Bells about a gang attacking people. Do you have any more details on that? And he's kind of uh, just sort of nodding to himself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, running down the, the roles he has in front of him. Are you intending to stay here, Medrick? For a while, yes. Okay. Or depending on where life takes me. Reaches into I'm another pocket. Looks into another what? pocket. Uh, pulls out a, a quill. Medrick, that's an unusual name. Where is it you come from? Player forgot the name <laughs> of... Well, I come from the war. Except <laughs> I forgot where it happened. I'm just, um... I come like from the war. Retcon with the actual name of the island Medrick comes from later on. Okay. <laughs> and where are you staying? The Three Bells. I don't want any trouble. I just want to know more information about oh, the we'll bandits. Oh, we'll be in touch. We were attacked by bandits as well. While you said you came, on a, you came on a ship recently, yes? About how yes. long ago? It's been a couple of weeks. Or three yeah. or four weeks. I'll say like a couple of weeks. <laughs> oh, well. <clears throat> on Am I in of, trouble? On or? behalf of the Baron and the Baroness, I'd like, to you to, I'd like to welcome you to the wonderful town <clears throat> of Elthwater. Citizen, we'll be in Thank touch you. about the taxes you'll be owing soon. Taxes, of course. All the establishment, citizens, all the citizens all. here pay taxes. It's the only way we can work together, of course. Right. But uh, the bandits, do you have any information? 
Well, they've been rather unfortunate, attacking caravans and delaying things. I heard report of a caravan being attacked just last night. Terrible thing. A couple of the survivors came into town, but they had no goods to sell, which is a real shame, because goods drive good tax money. But there's not much I can really claim if they don't have anything to sell. Are the gangs, are they related to the diamond? Make an insight check. Um, here we go. I believe that's a... Fuck's sakes. Wait, no. Yeah, well, still not that great. <laughs> um, the diamond, and he flips a couple of pages over. Who or what is the diamond? I don't know, but out of the bandits who attacked me and my friends so far, they all said, don't mess with the diamond. And of course we ignored them because they're bullies and bullies deserve whatever they get. You see him write a few notes down on his, on his sheaf of paper. Interesting. Well, if you were to find out more information about this diamond, who or whatever they happen to be, it would be much appreciated. You can go to the guard station and report it to them. All right. We would pay for that. It would be good information. All right. Mind you, it has to be good information for us to pay for it. If we find out it's not true, well, that would be an offense. Well, of course. It would be true to the best of our knowledge. Sometimes things aren't as they seem. He looks at you with a, a, a quizzical look. What do you mean? There's just been a lot of shadowy business in here lately, or shadowies. Yes. You know, like when you're, it feels like you're dreaming, but you're, you're not sure if you're dreaming. It, it looks at you kind of sideways. No, no, I don't know what you mean at all. All you know, right. When well, I'm dreaming, I'm pretty sure I know I'm dreaming. Anyway, sometimes it's hard to tell. Hmm. Make another insight. I'll yeah, yeah, I'll go ask my friends if they know if they heard anything else about the diamond. Your friends, um, what are their names? Hmm. Your friends. Oh, they'll introduce themselves to you in due time. By the way, my name is spelled M I D R I K. Make a uh, a uh, deception check, please. <laughs> I think my deception is a zero. No, it's a plus one. I'm like halfway charismatic. Ha! Wow. No tax for you. And he kind of nods and, and scratches out the, the name on the piece of paper. An unusual spelling for an orcish name, but uh, thank yeah. you for being so forthright. I'm glad to help the city. And I'll go back to my friends. Yeah. Um, and he continues down the street. You head back in. Well, he caught up with the guy. He knows nothing about the diamond that he let on. He might be lying. He seems like he had that kind of face. And, and don't give him your names because he's just going to tax the crap out of you. I like it. You get taxed for just existing. Well, everyone who lives here gets taxed. How much yeah. are the taxes anyway? So, yeah, uh, something you would be familiar with, Silas, is they do collect taxes on individuals and property owners uh, and businesses. Uh, individual taxes are only a few silver a month. Uh, okay. Property owner taxes are between one and five gold, uh, usually once a month. Apparently, it's going to be twice a month now. Uh, and businesses are taxed uh, anywhere from uh, 10 to 100 gold, depending on the business they do. Uh, the most expensive taxes are actually the ones down by the docks, but they're also the ones that turn over the most business. Yeah, I'll explain that to them. That that's one of the reasons why my family lives uh, down the coast a bit. They don't so, like to come out there as often to collect. Property taxes, how much? Sorry. Five to ten a month, I think it was, or one to five. 
I forget which. I forget what I just said because I didn't write it down. Silly me. I think it was one to five for property, ten to a hundred for business. Yeah, yeah. And just a few silver. Yeah, per person. From Silas's experience, they don't actually tax children. Um, and also, as, as Silas pointed out, and as you know, they don't tax your family because your family doesn't live in town. Or at least they, they might try to occasionally, but they don't want to walk all that way out there. There, there would be sales tax, essentially, um, that they would take an inventory when you bring something to market, and then they would, uh, they would uh, charge. That tax may also be paid by essentially the person you're buying it from, but it goes to the crown. Um, and so those numbers, that's before the increase or after the increase? Those would be the typical numbers. The, the increase definitely sounded large. Um, for uh, Sandy's business, there was an indication that it was doubled and it's now being added, done twice a month. So it's effectively quadrupled. Yeah. All right. Annie will be putting that in her notebook. All right. I will try to get those. I will try to get the, the tax rates firmed up so I can have them in my notes properly. Actually, if you want to send me your notes about that, Maria, that's probably the most, most accurate at the moment, rather than me trying to remember it and write it down. Here, I'll just send you a picture right now. While I'm, thinking I'm kind about of wondering, it. like, what are the taxes like in Vettor? Vitor is taxed at a very different st structure. So. The richer you are, the less you pay. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Um, but uh, if you're not going to have continued discussion in the house, if the intention is to basically get ready for the delivery that needs to be made in a couple of days, it wasn't going to be ready for a couple of days. Yeah, sure. Uh, then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call the session to a close because it's starting to get sweaty, but we've done pretty good. Yep. Uh, and uh, thank you guys for, for joining. Thanks for playing. Had Thanks a weird little battle. Maybe a dream to think about and maybe reflect upon. Who knows? Um, if people are interested in perhaps joining a discussion, I'm, I kind of want to prompt a discussion on our uh, our Facebook groups, but... Uh, Marie, you know all about those. Why don't you let people know what they are? Yes, we have the Facebook page that is uh, Legend of the Drowned Isles, and then there is a connected group where we have discussions and slash try to have discussions, which is Watchers of the Drowned Isles. You can also find us on uh, YouTube and on Twitch. We stream live on Sundays. The time has changed and then changed again. Apologies for that mm -hmm. if you do want to watch live. Uh, we now stream on Sunday mornings starting at 11 a.m. Atlantic time, which would be 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern and 7 a.m. Pacific. So there's probably not too many people in California watching. Uh, <laughs> but if you're in England, we're in the perfect time for your Saturday or your Sunday afternoon uh, kind of watching. If you're in Australia, it's probably yesterday or is it tomorrow? I never remember. Probably tomorrow. <laughs> time zones. Time zones and time shifting, which is available on our YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Uh, the episodes usually go up within a couple of days. That's going to be my new promise to try to do that. That's a little bit easier now. Uh, and you can watch them to your heart's delight. And do check out the artist. He does yes. really, really, really good work. Mm. So George84 did the art for the characters that you see in front of you. We have a uh, full uh, portrait art that I will be hopefully putting up. I think you put them up in the page. I, I shared um, Medrick and uh, Silas from the artist's Facebook page uh, yeah. onto our Facebook page. Uh, he just posted mine on his page yesterday, so I had shared it from like my version, uh, like my copy of it. So. Yeah, and it's on our Pinterest page, too, if anyone tracks that down. We have a Pinterest? Yep. <laughs> right, surprise everybody, we have a Pinterest. Follow us on Pinterest. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs>
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Character picks. So, uh, yeah, any yeah. more revelations we get to each other? We finally figured out what's up, what's going on. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, thank you guys for uh, playing today. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, we'll be back in another week. Uh, remember, folks, yeah. the, the microphones don't close when I go to the end credits page, but it does give you all the links you need, including the artist link and, of course, Kevin McLeod for the music as well. We'll be back, hopefully, without any further melting issues next yeah. Sunday. Yay!